Tonight, writer Julie Helene talks about creating fiction and her award-winning short story. Hi everyone, welcome to the program. I'm Andrew Whiteside. This is Gay Talk Tonight. My guest is award-winning writer Julie Helene. In September this year, lesbian writer Julie Helene won the prestigious Catherine Mansfield Prize for her short story, Misjudged. This developing author has already published her first novel and is writing a second. Julie, thank you for joining me. Um, really fantastic to have you here. And congratulations on the award. It's a few weeks ago now. It is. But a real big honour. You, you must feel that, I'm assuming. Oh, it's like being hit by a bus or something equivalent because it was such, um, such an astounding phone call to get out of the blue. And, and it was the Bank of New Zealand, of course, because they sponsor the award. And they had actually left a message on my phone. And, I, and I'm a Bank of New Zealand customer, so I was like, oh, someone's trying to sell me some kind of product and insurance. So... When I rang them back, I was a little bit testy. I was like, so what were you chasing me up for? And they said, oh, you've won this award. And honestly, I was floored, absolutely floored. How do you think it's going to impact on the future for you and for your writing? Oh, look, it's, it's big. Already I sort of feel this big lurch now towards, um, I have to take it a lot more seriously, you know, because, because creative writing can only really be a hobby uh, just you can't make a living out of it. Um, very few people in New Zealand would be able to, to say that. So, you know, it now transitions from being being in sort of a, a, an obsessive hobby into, you know, sort of writing that I want to take a lot more seriously and I have to carve out a lot more time to do it. So I feel that all, has all been sanctioned, really. You know, I can call myself a writer. That feels really nice. and And put that time and effort into it. The story itself misjudged. I really yeah. enjoyed reading it and I, I have to yeah. say I actually had an emotional reaction to it because I, I felt this kind of righteous indignation <laughs> on behalf of Rachel. <laughs> you know, and I think it was because mm. it took me back to being a child and you mm. know, the, the things that adults place on us, mm. um, the rules, the, the things, you know, even the chores that we have to do and so. So, so, yeah. I, so I felt that. Oh. It was partly autobiographical in a sense. Yes with some changes, obviously. Yeah. What did you draw on truly to create that story? Well, that is interesting because that story came out of a workshop I did with an um, American novelist, Jasmine Ward, who was over for the Writers' Festival, the, the Writers' and Readers' Festival in May. And I had uh, done this workshop with her. And uh, one of the things she asked us to do was to um, think of something that had a little bit of heat in it. Um, not too much heat, just a little bit of heat, and to write it. So it was a sort of technical exercise to write it from the first person and then to rewrite it from third person. And so um, for some reason that story just fell onto the page and it did take me back to <laughs> being, being a child and helping my father who was a kilt maker in Dunedin and um, you know being asked to do something that clearly I was a bit young to manage and, with, and and strode off quite naively to pick up this parcel and he never intended for me to drag this huge bolt of fabric back from the railway station but I was determined to do it um, and did succeed and so uh, that's where that story came from. My father is a lot nicer than, than, the, than, the, than the man in the story. He's now passed away, my dad, but um, yeah, there was a little bit of that Dunedin kind of um, expectation coming through that you work hard and industry is, is really valued. So the title misjudged. Yeah. And I, I mean, I took it that, that it was on both sides of the coin, both the father and the mm. child. Yeah, definitely in, in terms of the child sort of um, trying to meet an expectation that they're not quite ready for and, and getting a whole lot of stuff wrong. And you do that when you're a child. It's quite a vulnerable, very dangerous age in, in a way where you... You're reaching out to do things, but you get a lot of stuff wrong. And that, that struggle of, of misinterpreting yeah. Yeah. and then feeling like you're driven to do what you yeah. started off doing and, yeah. and not knowing how to ask for help. No, no. It? And sometimes having that uh oh moment where you think, actually, I think I've got this wrong. You know, when it's kind of too late, you think, oh, oh oops, you know. <laughs> but also that sense of, you know, she'd gone so far and she'd yeah. struggled so much and she's at yeah. the top of the stairs and that... That, that tension of, oh, she wants to yes. let it go, but, you know, you know mm. and that 
it, so it's almost she has to go on because she's put so much into it. Committed so much. And, and look, yeah. in a way, it is a bit of a metaphor. I mean, I only say that now. It wasn't intentional at the time. That it is a bit like committing to the writing process is like you've picked up this huge kind of parcel that you're supposed to take somewhere and you, you know you, you don't really have the competency to do it, but you've started, so you've got to finish. And I sometimes feel like that, particularly with novel writing, because it's such a commitment. It's such a long process. It's years, you know, you don't just knock out a book in a couple of months. And, and so you are sort of dragging this thing along that you just have to put to bed, you know. Um, maybe that's just me, but I'm completely obsessive and also a closer, so if I do start something, <laughs> as that short story kind of indicated, I've, I've got to bring it home. It's caused me a lot of problems in my life. <laughs> really? Oh, I think so. Just, just being quite um, dogged in, in the face of, you know, all sorts of information to say, Stop doing what you're doing, it's madness. <laughs> I'll keep boxing on. It's personality. Now, I did read that uh, Witi Imara is a mentor yes. to you. Yeah. Now, that's pretty incredible. I mean, oh. he's, a, he's a stunning writer. That, that was amazing. I mean, you know, how can you, how can you explain what that can do for your career or boost? And, and such a positive man who, who would read my work and they'd always find something to build on, and, and even if he had to take his pen out and write bits and scratch bits out, he'd be like, look, we can fix this, or watch me, or this is what I would do, and just fantastic stuff. Yeah. And, and he's another one who has that lovely balance between narrative and, yeah. uh, and description. Well, and humour too, which, I mean, I think that's beautiful, you know, if you, you can be taken along in something that's quite dramatic and, and, and then find yourself having, having a laugh or feeling just completely warm um, even a bit of satire, a bit of wry humour, so I think that's something I want to do more of. It didn't come through in a short story. It's interesting, that difference between a, a novel or the novel that I have written, which was very light, satirical, bounce-along kind of road journey full of, full of lesbian sort of mishap and misdemeanour and, and mayhem, um, and then to sit down and write a short story that I felt was sort of quite dramatic and poignant and didn't have any humour and I kept reading that story when I was writing it thinking this could almost be funny but it isn't and I wasn't sure why it wasn't but they kind of do their own thing stories I think. So your novel is the open accounts of an honesty box. I was interested in the characterisation because uh, as I've been reading it I could see the characters and think Mm, I know a lesbian like that. You know? <laughs> Funny. Yeah. yeah. But, but, it's, it. it's, but it's good to see that, you know, and I, I think this is one of the things about lesbian and gay mm -hmm. uh, fiction is that I don't think we see enough of it, to be honest with mm. you. I, you know, it's important that our stories are told in many different ways. Mm. So, so was that important to oh, you? Oh, absolutely. It was. Uh, I mean, I want to read about people like me and, you know, I don't... I mean, the trick is to avoid the stereotypes or nostalgia or to paint everything rosy, but the fact is, um, you know, uh, there are a lot of lesbians, like the lesbians in my book. You know, I didn't... You know how often in a novel the first page will say, look, the characters here, you know, do not bear any resemblance to people living or dead, you know, and I was like, gosh, I could never put that in my novel. It's just stuffed full of people that I know. It's just like this big morph of of characters in my life and what rich characters to write about. And I bet several people have said to you, that's me, isn't oh, it? Oh, they do. They do. Yeah. Honestly, my friends have said, is that me? Just, you know, and I'm like, look, it's, you know, com completely not about any one person, but you just morph us all together and it's just some stunning, stunning characterizations come out. Obviously, it's a story about women and it's about lesbian women. But I still found it a good read. I find often, uh, I, but I wonder that this yeah. kind of crossover, so mm. a, a book that's written by a gay male that is gay male related, yes. would many lesbians read it? Would many gay men read the book that you've written? Mm. Do, mm. do you think there's a, there's a tension or is there a crossover there that can be bridged? Oh, look, there is definitely. I think 
you're getting into the territory of good literature then and that, that would be the acid test for me is that people, anybody, will read well-written material and good literature, you know, will we'll get talked about and referred on and there'll be good reviews. So, you know, I don't go chasing that really. I have to really write for myself and I think too, in a way, starting out, write about things you know about, try and get the authenticity there, try and get the voices across that that you know and love. And for me, and, and maybe having really learnt this from Witty as well, you know, I have a lot of heart in my books and not all writers write from that perspective. But, you know, there is something really about love when you're sitting down writing about about your life and the people in it is... is uh, is something I really enjoy doing too. Now I know there's another one in the pipeline. There is. What, yeah. what can you tell me about that without giving too oh, much? Oh well, so, same kind of genre as the first one. So light, satirical, warm, affectionate, um, very positive book. A bit of a romp. Uh, again, looking uh, this time at about 1990 when the Queen was visiting New Zealand, <laughs> and. Um, and events around the anti-racism movement and trying to stop the Queen's visit and the, the celebrations around the 150 years of the Treaty of Waitangi. So potentially a controversial book, but written with a lot of humour and, uh, and, 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 and an important time in New Zealand history when there was just so much political activity. What is it, do you think, that leads to a, a happy, successful, fulfilled kind of life? Knowing yourself. And uh, I think that's a bonus, being gay, because you're forced to do that, most of us, at a very, very early age. Get to know yourself, uh, don't be swayed by what other people say, and, and stick to what really turns you on. And, and everybody's got those few things that really excite them. Be true to them. Give them time. Um, Julie, thank you so much. It's been great. Thank you. It'd be nice to talk to you.